another epic live feed is done. What's going on, everybody? Another epic live feed is done. Shout out to my man, Trucker Jim, for coming back and blessing the Lockout Men podcast show. Shout out to Mother Trucking Mom for coming up into the uh, into the uh, IG stream. The the before uh, the behind the scenes type deal that i did on ig make sure y'all go and follow me on ig shout out to the 800 plus uh followers on ig i really do appreciate that shout out to the lom community what's going on and shout out to uh to everybody else that supports the channel. Shout out to Trucker Jim for becoming a LOM community. Definitely, that was an epic two hour live feed with my man Trucker Jim. We, we sat and went over topics like never before. Uh, he went over to how he became a uh, GMP. Uh, child support uh and a whole host of number number of things uh when you watch it if you don't want to watch it in its entirety and i understand that put it in two times the speed you know kind of like you know speed through until you hear a, a particular topic that you want to talk about or that you want to listen to trucker gym everybody trucker gym well my day was uh event well it wasn't as event as eventful as trucker gyms but you know i I wake up drive and <laughs> shut down do 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 the, do the uh do the uh episode and do my commentary and that's about it that's about it turn off the lights shut everything down go to sleep get up and do it all over again <laughs> wash and rewinch. <laughs> That's about it. Not much, not not much of an, an event today. I did get a chance to stop over at the Iowa 80 truck stop. Always pick up a souvenir while I'm there. Their their 2021 Jubilee or Jamboree t-shirts is not available yet, but I was able to pick up this joint right here which is very which is very interesting i i like this I, I i like this joint right here look look at this right here look at this built for social distancing stay loaded apparel built for social distancing <laughs> uh only one of only one of us that's what's up man this 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 is a this is a sweet ass t-shirt i mean it's just a ordinary cotton t-shirt but you know the the screen print is is what makes this t-shirt though definitely pick that up if you're interested in that i probably might wear it in the lot in the next live feed i don't know I don't know. Uh, if you guys always want to know what's going on with me, definitely check out the Lockout Man podcast channel. Um, and when I'm not on the channel, I am on Instagram. So follow me over on Instagram. So without further ado, let's get into this commentary. Brian Little. <laughs> what's going on everybody like out man back again with another commentary for you i'm glad that you're here i really do appreciate it and without further ado we're just going to go ahead and jump right into it so earlier today i referenced the video uh like a quick video on uh what to do and how to be respectable when you decide to leave a company now there's several reasons why you may 
want to leave a company. You may want to leave a trucking company for, I don't know, maybe you had a better chance to earn more money at another company. You might, might have a better relationship between you and the fleet manager. Or maybe the relationship between you and the employer didn't work out. Maybe there's a position that better fits you and your family. Maybe you had problems with the equipment. For whatever the reason that you're leaving the company, there are certain things that you should know before you go. There's things that you should do and things that you shouldn't do. Um, I do have some tips, a little, a little bit of advice, you know, that might help you transition into a new trucking job into a trucking job that might goes a little bit smoothly and help you start off on the right foot. Or in other words, leave on the right foot because you're gonna always start off on the right foot when you get to the new company anyway, right? So let's say you, 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 you get with a company, all right? Let's say you get with a company, you rocked out with them for over a year and you had issues throughout that year with the company. Well, that's where I come into play, all right? The last company, I'm not gonna come on here and, and beat up the last company I was with, you know? I mean, for what it's worth, for what it's worth, the company, the company was okay. It was a black ops company. You know what I'm saying? It, it was one of them black ops company that I rocked out for for over a year. And um, and as you guys know that I put it in my Instagram, because if you follow me on Instagram, you, you pretty much knew the progression story of what went on that made me decide to leave that company. Now, again, uh, the company was right. You know, me and the fleet manager in the beginning kind of had rocky ways, but we was able to, you know, come to an understanding, come to a grasp, come to a, 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 a camaraderie, come to a, a rhetoric, whatever. And then it was, it was cool. I got the miles, I got the pay. I got the miles, I got paid. But my only, my only issue was, was that I was sitting for majority of the time, 11 hour clock. And I would do maybe about, maybe about a 400 to maybe 450 radius. It's it kind of like when I got off of home. To, so this, it, let me, let me break it down to you. It, it, it kind of like was when I got off of home time and I got up to uh, Illinois, Illinois pretty much put me in a kind of like local position. I got 11 hours on the clock and I will only run maybe 400 miles. Now, not to say that I wasn't making no money, but the, the but this was the, this was the position that was available and the money was to compensate for the less miles. See, that's the thing that you guys got to understand when you go in, that if a company offers you more money, then somewhere along the way, it's going to have to compensate for the less miles that you get. Think about it. The, the less money that you get, the more miles you're going to get. The more money that you get, the less miles that you're going to get. So I was averaging about between 2,000 and 2,400 miles a week. And I would go home. All right. Now, there was sometimes that I would get a little bit more miles and I, I would get a little bit more. You know what I'm saying? But it was just some hit or miss. And it was, it was good because it was, you know, I, I, I consider this 
company. I knew I wasn't going to stay with this company long because I considered this company as a bridge. You know what I'm saying? It's it's it was a bridge between the previous company and the future company that I would probably go with. So this was a bridge. But along the way, along along riding on that bridge, I kind of got complacent. And let me explain that. Let, let me explain that a little bit. So me and the ref, uh, fleet manager, we was good. We was vibing and all like that. And then I kind of got used to, I kind of got used to things that was pretty much coming my way. Kind of got used to getting off early. Kind of got used to waiting. Kind of got used to, kind of got used to the money I was making. So I got complacent. And with that complacent was kind of like, okay, well, I'm, I'm cool where I'm at. It's a good company. They treating me good. I'm good. I'm cool. I'm not going to move away from this company. This company is this, that, and the third. Sliced bread, you know. But I got complacent. And with that complacent, I don't know. So what happened was, you know, the, 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 the year, you know, my W-2 this year, my, my, my taxes, what I made, my W-2, beautiful. Because I kind of like worked my way up the ladder to the top tier. I would start getting, I, I would start getting loads that I wanted to go places. You know, I always, yo, call them up on, call them up on Monday. I will be somewhere that I wanted to be on Friday. I would get home every week. It was no doubt about getting home. I would, I would get my load in the morning. And I will be home by five o'clock Friday evening. I deliver my load Monday morning. And then I'll come back, you know, come back on to get a load to bring me back out to Illinois later on that Monday. Friday, uh, Saturday and Sunday, completely off. Drive the truck the way I want to drive. You know, uh, uh. You know, I ain't gonna go into details on on how I drove the truck. Just just know that I drove the truck. Also, getting what I wanted. Now, not as much as what I wanted, but but getting what I wanted. I got complacent. You know, again, yo, I wanna be in Texas on Friday. All right, no problem. Boom, 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 boom Friday. I'm in Texas. See, the only, the, the only small problem that I have with this company is they didn't, I, 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 they, they didn't like plan me correctly, if I'm saying that right. And what I mean by planning me correctly is you get me a, here's, here's an example. You get me a load on Monday for Monday to be delivered the next morning. So let's say about 450, about three, 450, 100 miles, okay? That's the, that takes delivery the next morning, seven o'clock, six o'clock, or whatever. My thing is, once you get me that load, you should be on the clock looking for the next load that'll be ready for me once I drop this load in the morning. That wasn't the case. So I would drop the load in the morning at about six o'clock, six, uh, six o'clock, I'll be done. And then I would have to wait for dispatch to get into the office at eight o'clock. Now, luckily for me, I was able to drive all the way to the place, post up at the place until they open up in the morning, and I will already be there. I wouldn't have to start my clock. I would just back up into the dock, 
get unloaded and I will still have a fresh clock rate waiting for me when I get the next load. But my problem with said company was just that. I had to wait until they come in at around eight o'clock and then they would get on the computer. The computer going to have to warm up and then they're going to have to get on the low board. But also think about this. You know, I'm not the only one that they're looking for lows for. They got maybe about one, two, three, four, five other drivers in the queue that they looking for lows. So while they're looking for lows for them, I don't know where I am at on the list. Obviously, I must be like somewhere near the bottom because the next load I don't get is until like maybe 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock. Or I, I would know about the load at maybe like 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock, but the load don't pick up until one o'clock two o'clock and it's due the next day oh well you know i found this load for you it picks up at about one o'clock in the evening and then i drive over there uh deadhead over there maybe about uh an hour or two hours and then i gotta get into the i gotta check in and then in some cases of checking in on some of these places that they had me going to it was always miscommunication on the time. Oh, well, um, you're late. No, I'm not late. I, I just got the I just got the dispatch, sir. You're but you're late though. This don't pick this didn't pick up until nine o'clock this morning. And see, that's the key right there. See what it is? Probably somebody else accepted the load. But then changed their mind about the load, which still left it at eight, you know, left it at the regular pickup time. I would get there and then I would be penalized by waiting, wasting my clock. And that happened to me way too many times at said company. Too many times. I would get, it was one time that I literally got there uh, on time, but yet they didn't finish, they didn't load me. It was 10,000 pounds and it took them 10 and a half hours to load. But lockout man, you get, you get paid detention, bump detention. Detention is messed up if I go home every week. It messes up the week. It messes up the day. And then I had to turn around and fight for detention. Now, with my one fleet manager, the first one, I didn't have a problem getting my detention because he would make it like an actual layover. And I would get 10 times more than what the detention will actually pay. With the new fleet manager, it wasn't like that. I tried to make it work with the new fleet manager. It just didn't work. With the old fleet manager, no problem. Yo, I got you locked out, you know. Here's $100 for, for your time. But it was just way too many times that I was held up at a shipper or a receiver on some bad communications between the dispatcher and the broker. And with that, it, it, it was just accumulating, accumulating with me. I, I looked at the, I looked at the pros and I looked at the cons. And unfortunately, the cons outweighed the pros. I tried to give the new dispatcher the benefit of the doubt. It was cool. Yeah, he did get me to where I wanted to go. If I needed to be in Minnesota, if I needed to be in Texas, if I needed to be in North Dakota, North, uh, North, uh, uh, North, whatever, 
down south somewhere, Carolina, North Carolina, I would get there. No problem. The pay fluctuated. I still made good at the end of the year because of how much I was getting paid, but it fluctuated. I came to my dispatcher. I was like, yo, man, it's time for me to go. I really, yo, bro, it's time for me to go. But but my first fleet manager always kept me. He pulled me back. When I was when I was leaving, he pulled me back in. Just when I thought I was out, they pulled me back in. That's what he do. When I'm out, when I thought I was leaving, I was telling him I'm about to put in my resignation. He pulls me back in and I'm like, all right, bro, I'll, I'll give you your chance, man. Just when I thought I was out, they pull me back in. I'll give you your chance, bro. He pulls me back in. But that's what he do. But the new fleet manager, It was, it was just, we was right here and every dispatch, it was just goes down and down and down and down and down with every dispatch with this dispatcher, man. I mean, again, there, there was, there, there, I, I, there was, uh, there was like some minor disunderstanding of the way I run and the way he dispatched and the way he did things, I was just not cool with. So without getting into detail and without, you know, making a long story out of it, I'm just going to tell you guys, that, you know, that my experience with with the company and the dispatcher. Now the company as a whole, not a bad company. You come in, you know, it's a bridge company. You know, you come in, you do what you need to do, and you find something else good, you you move on. It's not a bad company. It's just my experience with them and their dispatching was kind of messed up. I felt that when you give me a load, you be on the clock to look for another load and get me a load that don't have no problem picking up and delivering. My issue was a lot of pickups and I was held up at like 80% of them. There was a time that I picked up a load at eight o'clock in the evening. It didn't load until eight o'clock in the morning. You know, and it was just, it, 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 it was just building. So the climax to the story and the climax to the reason why I left was a couple of weeks ago, about four weeks ago. Um, oh, oh, let, let me go back up. Not only about the, the company uh, with the dispatching I had a problem with, I had major problems with the equipment. All right, let's, let's, let's talk about that for a few minutes. When I first came in, when I first got, when I first got rolling, the very first truck got out to Wisconsin, it derated on me. Boom. With that, they, they brought out another truck. They actually had another driver to bring me another truck. It was supposed to, now when I talked to the recruiter, I was supposed to get in a, at that time, a 2019, 2020. That was what I was supposed to get into. That was what the recruiter said I would get into. That was what I was looking to get into. I didn't get into that. I got into a 2016 Volvo with maybe about 300,000 miles on it. Not bad. Not bad, but it wasn't good either. It broke down. D-rated. They gave me another truck. The other truck they brought out there was a piece of fucking shit. I literally had to get I I, I had to get that truck uh what do you call it? Um what do you call it? Cleaned. What's what's another word for clean? 
But I, I had to get it clean. I, I literally had to disinfect it. The, the refrigerator was crusty and dirty. The, the, the mattress was, was horrible. I mean, bro, I had to, I, I, I stopped over at home, uh, not Home Depot, but Walmart and brought two uh, bed sheets to go over that. And when I got back to the uh, when I got back to the yard and I asked them for another one, I threw all that shit away. <laughs> I threw all that away. Uh, that truck, the second truck, broke down. I'm driving. All of a sudden, the radiator busted. Psh, done. That one's gone. They put me in another truck, another twenty, uh, another twenty seventeen piece of shit. That didn't last long. And then the last one, not not the not the second to the last, but the second to the last, that I, I rocked out with that throughout my throughout the entire year. That one had like uh a half a million miles on it though. All right, so fast forward to a couple of weeks ago. Um they they took the truck, they cycled that truck out. And I'm I'm thinking I'm getting into a new 2020 because that's what they kept saying. Yo, we getting 2020s in next week. We getting 2020s in next week. We getting 2020s in next week. And I'm like, cool. Let's go. I'm waiting. Let's do it. Bring it. Let's do it, bro. Give me that good 2020 Volvo with the with the flip down table and the in and, and, and the space. Give me that shit. No. Yo, lock out. We got a truck for you. Okay. Yo, where's the truck at, uh, Andy? Oh, it's in the back. In the back over there. It should be running. Hey, uh, Andy. Yes, yes, lockout. Yes. Uh, you you talking about that Freightliner back there? Yes, yes. That's that's the truck you'll be going into. What year is that Freightliner, bro? Oh, that's that's the 2016 Freightliner. I'm supposed to be getting in a brand new Volvo, bro. What's 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 up with that? Oh, we don't we don't have the Volvos in yet. Volvo's haven't came in yet. It, it'll come in next week. This this drive this truck for a week. Drive this truck for a week, and I will have a new Volvo for you at the end of the week. Drive this truck for a week. I don't want to drive this truck. Better yet, why don't I just get back in the Volvo that you took me out of, and I'll drive that for a week, and you can you can keep the Freightliner, and I'll just waiting for a new Volvo. No, 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 no. We we need this Volvo right here. Recycling this Volvo out. This Volvo out, we're cycling out. Recycling out. We recycling the Volvo out. I don't want this Volvo, bro. I don't want this one. I mean, I don't want this Freightliner, man. I don't want to mess with a Freightliner. I don't fuck with a Freightliner, man. And that Freightliner had got like at some amount of miles on there too. I, all right, man. Fuck it. All right, cool. You know, what? Whatever. What? Whatever, man. I, I'm just. I'm. I'm fed up right now. I'm feeling like super disrespected right now. Like, Hello, darkness, my old friend. Like, bro, for real, for real. Y'all been, y'all, y'all been playing me uh, for about six months about getting the new truck, my G. I don't get it, man. I, I yo, bro. Look, you know what's what's up, man. All these other new people that's coming in there, I'm seeing they getting new Volvos. I just got finished talking to a female driver. Brian Little. <laughs>